Hello there folks, Spunky Kook here, aka your Lonely Achievement Guide, and I am coming at you with another installment of our From Zero to One Thousand Achievement Hunting series for the game time on Frog Island, published by Merge Games and developed by Half Past Yellow. It initially released on the 12th of July of 2022 and is currently purchasable for a price of $24.99. There are 35 achievements for 1000G, and there's a lot of little tidbits that I have to throw in at the beginning of this guide in order to give you a time estimate. Um, some of my games I tend to go in detail for almost no reason, just because I want you to know information. I highly recommend you listen to the introduction here because there is a lot of things that can go wrong uh, going through this game. So, in a perfect world, at the time of recording this video, it's going to take you about 10 to 12 hours to get your 1,000, but approximately 7 to 8 of that is going to be AFK running in a circle to grind out the running distance achievement, or walking distance achievement, the sea legs achievement for walking 10 kilometers. Um, the dev made a mistake when they programmed this achievement and accidentally programmed it to 1,000 kilometers instead of 10. Uh, I think when that achievement gets fixed, you'll be able to unlock that simply by playing through the game, uh, the two playthroughs that I have set up for us to go through and get the 1000G. Um, but at the time of recording this, there is no update, which means that you're going to have to let your console run overnight or throughout the day. Um, I have a, a strategy for uh, you're just going to grab a beehive and go jump into the the bowl uh, with the gem in it up on a hill and you can leave your controller on and run away and the game will auto run in a circle around that bowl overnight until you get your 1000 kilometers. Um, the dev is working on patching this game but they haven't given a timetable for it so I wanted to write a step-by-step -step walkthrough for this and post it on my website and then have the video guide up on my YouTube channel. And unfortunately, the game is so glitchy and unpredictable right now, I just can't put a step-by-step -step walkthrough up. There's no way for me to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is record this video. We're going to go through and get... Uh, we won't get the 1000G because I'm not going to record myself running in a circle for seven hours. But I will be showing you just about everything else and everything required for you to get your 1000G. Um, so for example, there are some weather quests that are related to the weather on the island. There's only like five, I think, throughout the entire game. But if the weather pattern is different for you, which I believe it's only static on the first three days, and then it changes. Um, so if you get rain on the fourth day, you may not be able to do all of the quests that I do. Uh, and you may want to write down the quest I didn't do so that when it's sunny again, you can go back and do that quest. And that's how you're going to have to approach following along with me. Um, 95% of the stuff will go off without a hitch, but the stuff that doesn't work is very annoying. Um, the cartographer quests, there are... I think there's only like three or four actual cartographer quests, but we're going to be doing six different quests for him. Um, some of which don't give you the quest completed notice, but you need to complete them for him to move on to an area that has a quest. The problem is, I've played through this game multiple times now. Sometimes the achievement for doing all the cartographer's quests unlock after you do four of his quests. And sometimes the achievement for doing his quests unlocks after you do all six of his quests. There really is no way I've found to predict when some of the quests will unlock and if you have to do all six. So I'm just going to run through and show you the six uh, quests that you have to do and hopefully the achievement will pop at four for you and if it does um, you don't have to continue on and do the other two quests. Uh, I know this is really confusing but I tested this myself. Despite the game having an achievement for completing all of the quests if say the Northwest Island isn't open when you finish the cartographer's quest line, 
uh, and get the four quests done, because he has one on that northwest island. If you get his other quests done before that island is open, the game automatically excuses you from having to do the other quests. You'll pop the achievement at four uh, cartographer quests, and then he moves by your boat, and you can't do the other quests. So again, this is very confusing. I promise you, if you follow along with what I do in the guide, you will get your achievements. You may have to take notes on some of the things I do and do them on a later day if you can't get them done on the day you're at. Um, there is a day-night cycle, and at night your character occasionally will stop and complain that he's tired, but you do have... Um, as far as I know, an unlimited amount of time to run around at night. So what I tend to do in the guides is I focus on villager-specific quests earlier in the day, and we spend nighttime doing things that don't require villager interaction because they go into their houses and you can't talk to them anymore. So um, most of the achievements are simply for doing all the quests. Um, I'll go ahead and run through the 35 here real quick. There are six that are story-related. There's one for completing the game in five days. We're going to use a second playthrough for that. There's an achievement for staying airborne for seven and a half seconds or more. This is a little tricky, but there is a method for doing it that uh, I found at to on, on top of the mountain. There's one for duplicating a coin uh, by farming it. There's one for buying something from the merchant, one for planting a mushroom in every dirt patch on the island, one is for knocking over all nine piles of stones in one day, one is for paying the carpenter to build your entire house, one is for throwing an item and grabbing it with your tongue before it hits the ground. You can't do this right off the bat, you have to brew a potion, so don't worry about this. Uh, it's a very easy achievement, but we have to unlock the ability first. One is for displaying a honeycomb inside your finished house. One is for completing the chef's quest line before putting any of the boat parts onto your boat. Um, that's the sail, the rudder, the wheel, and the rope. You can put the planks and the plant on your boat, and that doesn't void the achievement. So what we're going to be doing is if we do ever get a boat piece, we're going to bring it back to our initial campsite and drop it on the ground uh, beneath, or below, excuse me, behind the campsite and leave it on the ground. That way um, we'll have it next to the, the boat when we're done with the chef's quest line, but we don't want to attach them to the boat uh, because it will void that achievement and you'll have to go through the entire uh, chef's quest line again, which is a pain to do on a second playthrough. Um, there is one for completing all the cartographer's quests. Again, we, we covered the glitchiness of that. There is one for completing the hidden time trial, and it's not very difficult. There is one for completing every quest in the game and completely building your house. Again, we kind of went over the, the, um, the problems you may run into as far as weather and uh, the cartographer quest and the merchant's quest is a problem too. Luckily there is a solution for fixing that by uh, exiting the game and popping back in. So I'll be showing you that as well. Um, to be completely honest, I'm not entirely sure if every quest we do is required for this achievement. Um, there's a couple of mini quests that we do that may not be required, but we're going to get them done anyways. Uh, for the most part, they don't take very long. Uh, there's one for talking for every frog villager. Again, we'll, we'll work on that as we go through the game. There are six for taking your plant to the different locations around the island. We're going to work on that once we have the uh, Northwest Island unlocked, because two of the uh, locations are on the Northwest Island, so it's not really worth worrying about until you can travel to every space on the island. There's one achievement for asking a frog about the same item three times in a row. This was a little glitchy for me, but it's really easy. I actually got this um, on accident. I was talking to a frog with a brand new item, and it popped. We're going to take care of this immediately when we start the game so you don't have to worry about it, but it was a bit glitchy for me in a good way, 
and it uh, it unlocked for me when it shouldn't have. So, one achievement is for bre brewing a potion. Again, this is for required for the chef missions. So, and some of the side missions. So we'll have to do that. One achievement is for catching your first fish. Again, unmissable. You have to do this if you're going for every other quest. Not uh, story related though. So. If you're going for all the achievements, we'll be getting the f the fish achievement without a problem. But if you are just blitzing through the story, you are not required to get the fishing rod. Or I mean the, the fishing crate unlocked for that. There are three achievements related for to jumping, running, and throwing items a certain amount of times. Uh, again, we covered the running that... They misprogrammed it so the distance is much longer. You need to throw items a thousand times. Um, I highly recommend waiting until you have the tongue grab ability. It'll make this significantly faster. Um, and then you need to jump a thousand times. So because you need to jump a thousand times, I highly recommend that you uh, just jump as you're running throughout the game. Just keep pressing the A button. Um, it will add up eventually, and while you could gr just run through the game normally and start jumping, you know, and grinding it at the end, it really isn't that big of an inconvenience to be jumping regularly as we go through the game. One achievement is for completing the frog statue ritual. I will show you where all three of the statues are. There's one achievement for sleeping at every camp. And again, we will cover all three spots. And the final achievement is for getting an ice flower before opening the mountain game, or gate. Again, very simple. So here's what we're going to do. I know, uh, again, my preamble is going on very long, but I like to give you all the information. Our first playthrough is going to take things efficiently but slow. We're going to take out probably 32 of the 35 achievements on this run, not including the jump and walk achievements, which, um, depending on how you handle those, they may or may not unlock on our first playthrough. If you decide to grind out the running overnight on your first playthrough, have at it, but I don't recommend it. I recommend waiting uh, until after your second playthrough. Uh, especially if you're playing this after they've updated the game and hopefully fixed the distance achievement. Um, and then our second run is going to complete the game in less than five days. And after that, if you still have any of the cum cumulative achievements, you can grind them out and you'll have your 1000G. Hello there folks, present Bonky Kook butting in on past Bonky Kook here because past Bonky Kook is an idiot and left a couple of important details out. The most important thing, uh, and I forgot to mention this until the third day and I wanted to jump back in here and let all of you know about this, is that you should set aside about two, two and a half hours to try to get your first playthrough done exactly as I have shown it. Um, Quitting out of the game at all can cause villagers and quests and items to be in different locations when you come back in. If you've moved, uh, say, some of your boat parts will be placing by the campsite. If you quit out of the game after we've done that, your boat parts will go back to where they initially were. You'll have to go back and collect them again. Um, sometimes quitting out will cause... The merchant quest did not work properly. The cartographer will be uh, all over the place, depending on if you, you quit out. Um, so it's very important that you only quit out of the game when I tell you to, and the way I tell you to. You can quit out to the main menu, uh, as which is the screen I'm on right now, and you can use the guide button to quit out. But doing so has different repercussions. Um, quitting out to the main menu will change different things than quitting out to the guide through the guide will. It's really weird, which is why uh, I haven't explored all the different ways the game can change depending on which way you quit out, and I highly recommend that you stick with me and only quit out the way I tell you to. Uh, we do it twice throughout the uh, first playthrough using just going to the main menu and then during the uh, five-day 
achievement run, we quit out using the guide method. Make sure that you have the time set aside to be able to do this, or that you can just leave your game paused and come back to it if you do get interrupted, because quitting out uh, through the main menu or quitting out through the guide button uh, can cause character locations, quests, etc. to play out differently than you're going to see them play out in the video. And I needed to be uh, sure that I reminded every one of you of this because it is very important. The game is already super glitchy and uh, if you wind up having to quit out at different times than I do, uh, your game is going to play out even more differently than mine does depending on the random stuff like weather and stuff like that that I've already talked about. So make sure that you follow along with me as best you can so that you can keep up with the video as well as possible. And I think that's all I got. We're going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, I will be following a checklist that I have um, and if they ever release the patch and make things more consistent, I will be releasing this checklist. Um, but at the time, it is not reliable um, because of the inconsistency of the game. So I will be updating all of this if a patch ever comes out so that if there is the ability to make a step-by-step -step walkthrough, I will do so. But for the time being, this video is going to be the only uh, media that I have available for uh, Time on Frog Island because I, uh, I don't really know how to type out, oh, well, do this, but you have to do this on this day unless the weather is this, and then you'll have to push these three quests back and it would just be very confusing so let's go ahead and get started uh, I'll try to do things a little slower than I normally do but I am going to skip the cutscenes what we're gonna do right off the bat is you're gonna wake up and right beneath us in the water are two planks so you can hit the X button to pick them up bring them up to your ship and there's your first achievement um, most of the achievements are kind of uh, end game. So you, we get a couple right off the bat and then we're it's going to be uh, a slow drip for a while. We're going to grab the bottle here on the ground now that we put both of our planks on the boat. We're going to run over to here and meet the painter frog. But he doesn't know what the bottle is yet so we're going to run away, drop it, pick it up, talk to him again. I'm going to run away, drop it, pick it up, talk to him again. And that will unlock us our second achievement for asking a frog about an item he doesn't understand. So run over and go chat with the frog. He has our plant and we want that back. So once he tells us he's painting the plant and he would need something else to paint, he requests a bottle. Which he couldn't recognize, you know, a minute ago. So run over, grab the bottle, run back to him, and he will go and bitch slap your plant off. Um, there is the chance that he knocks it off and it goes and rolls into the water, but you can pick it up in the water. Uh, so grab your plant, run over here, and just drop it on this rock. You're, later on there will be a spot for it on the rock, but we're just going to put it on the rock for now. Um... Uh, I started running the wrong way. Head to the east here. There's going to be a mushroom, a very large one, and some small one next to it. Grab one of the mushrooms. And we're going to head back towards the painter. And we're going to walk south past the painter and follow the path up a little windy cliff. When you get to here, walk straight off you'll see a little dirt patch down here. You can press X to plant your mushroom, and that is the first mushroom patch. And now keep heading north, and you will see a second mushroom patch. So go ahead and plant a mushroom. And now we're going to go up here, and this is the infamous cartographer frog. We're going to go ahead, and he's trying to jam himself in to that rock formation because he dropped his binoculars in there somehow. But he's too wide to get him. Luckily, we're very tiny compared to the frogs on this island, so we're going to go grab his binoculars for him. And now he can see. 
He'll be happy, he'll run off, and we can run off as well. We're going to head to the north up here. And head up this windy hill here to meet the fisher frog. Make sure that you get that little rope notification on your way up as well. And talk to the fisher frog and he'll be like, I need a feather so I can fish for my lure. We can't get that yet, but we will eventually. We're now going to head to the northeast. We'll cut through the woods here. You can grab beehives if you want to make yourselves run faster, but everything that I've told you to do can be done without using the speed boost as long as you keep up with me. Um, so we're going to head over to this direction and talk to the guard frog. The guard frog is guarding an axolotl that has a feather, but the guard frog won't let us in until we bring his love letter to the painter frog. I guess her love letter is? I don't know. So he's going to drop a letter, we're going to pick it up, and we need to bring it all the way back to the painter frog. So kind of head to the south, southwest. You'll see the slugs there following us along, around the tadpoles, whatever. They are very annoying. They are cute for all of five seconds, and then they just continuously follow you around, and it's a bit of an, an annoyance. To me, anyways. You might be different. So we bring this letter to the painter frog, and he'll be like, A love letter? Oh my gosh! I've always loved the guard frog! Bring him this letter! So... We get a letter, and now we're going to run back to the city and drop off the letter with the guard frog. This will finish our second painter quest. And our fourth quest overall. And this also ends our interaction with villagers for the day. As you can see, it's starting to get dark. Guard Frog is going to head off to the painter, and we're going to head off to the east. Once you cross the two bridges here, head to the southeast, and just keep heading southeast. And again, you... If you remember, try to jump as much as you can. There's a little sandbar here so we can cross to the eastern island. And we're just going to keep heading this direction. And when we see the sunflowers, we're going to head east and cut into the forest here. And then head up to where the beehive is and follow the path up. We're going to get the purple gem that is at the top here. This is the bowl I was telling you about you'll use to grind out the running distance. So jump in, pick up the gem, and now we need to head back to that uh, double bridge east of the village. So we'll just head down the hill and cut through the woods here. And I know I'm probably a bit more familiar with the terrain than you are. I've put about 40 some, 45 hours into this game. Uh, with all the guides and playing it and figuring things out for myself. Uh, so once you get to the bridges, head north. And you're going to start heading up the hill. You follow it to the left a little bit. And once you get up to this clearing, you'll see some trees. Drop your gem. Um, there should be mushrooms here. If you don't see any out here, run back behind. And there's usually some mushrooms in the back. Um, so grab one of the mushrooms, and now we need to keep uh, heading all the way up the hill. Once you get up here, you're going to ignore the gate. Sorry, I may have bumped my mic there. And you're going to follow the path around here and use one of the 
platforms to jump up to here. Now you're going to have to jump and hold the X button to throw the mushroom up to that platform. Like that. Just jump up over here to make sure the mushroom doesn't roll off. And now you can head back to where the gate was. Uh, we need to grab a leaf. So, And you may have noticed two sitting on the ground right uh, before the gate. Well, not... I don't know if it was the ground. A little rock here. So jump up, grab one of the leaves, and we're going to return to where we threw the mushroom. And because we have the leaf, we can glide now. So we're going to be able to just glide over to that platform. So jump up and glide. Drop your leaf. Make sure you keep it up on the platform because you're going to need it in a second. And we're going to plant our third mushroom. Now grab the leaf, and we're going to jump on this mushroom twice. So jump once, and just kind of tap the right bump. It's a little bit of a difficult jump. There we go. And now, once you've made it up, hold X and throw your leaf down, just on the off chance you fall. Um, that spot there with the Buddha statue is where the ritual statues need to go. And we'll be coming back up here uh, quite a bit over the next couple of days. Um... We're going to climb up to the top, and this is the first kind of random thing in the game. There is supposed to be a rock up here that shines, and it has a diamond inside of it. Um, I have had playthroughs where it just never shows up. And if it doesn't show up, which it is not here, it'll spawn right here. You have to wait until the western island is open to get the diamond rock. If you don't get it, Every night before you go to bed, run up to the mountain and try to find it. Uh, I'll try to remind you, and hopefully, honestly, in our case, that it doesn't show up so I can show you exactly what we need to do. Um, but if the, the rock is here, just pick it up and then throw it. It'll hit the ground and the diamond will fall out. And you can leave the diamond sitting there for now. And then continue up here and jump across the gap and grab one of these flowers and we'll get an achievement for getting the flower without opening the gate. And now we're going to jump down the mountain here. Be careful you don't jump too far, because if you do, you'll drop whatever item you're carrying, and there is a chance it can, you know, bounce in a bad way, and you'll just lose whatever you were carrying. Bring the flower down to the gem. Grab the gem and bring it up to the gate now to open it. Um, this is completing the second cartographer quest, but we may not get the notification that it's complete for a while. Um, depending on his movements, he eventually comes up here, but I haven't been able to predict when because of how random everything is. Um, just at some point you may be running up the mountain and you'll get a notification that a quest is complete because the game realized you opened the gate. Um... Now that we did the gym, we're going to head back over this direction, instead of going down to the flower yet, and cross this bridge. Um, this is one of the three spots we can sleep at, but for right now, we're going to drop down here, and we're going to jump over to this church and take the bell out. This completes a quest for the hermit. And then we're going to jump down, and we need to return to where that flower was. So we're going to head to the east side of the island and pick up the flower and we're going to bring it to that building to our north here, which is the tavern or restaurant or whatever you want to call it. I think the game calls it a tavern for the chef frog. So head back up the hill, grab the flower. You can jump across the gap here, save yourself a little bit of time, and run inside. The chef frog is very excited that you brought him a flower. So what we need to do with the items we bring in is jump up here and drop them in this big vat or pot or whatever it is. And you'll notice we now have an ice flower in the ingredients list above the keg there. Um, the game automatically gives you, I don't know if it's water or whatever, but we have the ingredients for our first potion. And now go and talk to the chef frog. He's happy you have his first...
potion ingredients in, and he tells you you need, need to go to sleep so you can get the cold drink. With that done, we're going to head back up to that fire pit I was telling you about before we got to the or drop down to the church. And that's uh, almost going to end the day for us. And again, the next two days should have the proper weather pattern, so you should be able to follow me rather well, uh, other than that diamond that may or may not have shown up for you. So go ahead and chat with these two frogs. We're going to chat with the merchant first, because he'll be happy. Um, he's very angry about the church bell ringing, so we got rid of the church bell to finish that quest for him. And now we're going to chat with the merchant frog, who's... Uh, angry, I think the merchant stole his lantern, or, or I mean the hermit stole his lantern, or the merchant wants the lantern. Hermit won't give it up. So, once you chat with them, head down to the fire pit. And every fire pit has three pieces of wood somewhere near it. Um, this, this one and the one on the southeastern beach have a pile of three. Um, the one by your beginning boat campsite... Sometimes has two, but there's also driftwood on the beach you can use. So you always have to add three pieces of wood to the fire to make it start. And then you can walk up to it and hit X to go to sleep. And that is our first fire pit. Our first day complete. And we have three of the 35 achievements. Not a very good pace. But as I said, the first couple of days you don't get very much. And then we're going to be unlocking a ton right in a row at the end. So... So let's go ahead here, and we're going to immediately drop down to our right. When you get to the cliff and you see the house, just drop down, and you'll meet the axolotl. She wants a feather, or we want a feather, and she wants a rainflower. We can't get the rainflower until it rains. Drop down, and we're going to look for the Pope Frog, who should be right here with his tongue sticking out. I actually don't know if that's his tongue. I call him the Pope Frog. And now we're going to look for this larger female frog here. She wants a diamond uh, for her frog head statue, but for now, uh, we can't get the diamond. Again, we'll be checking for that every night before we go to bed if we didn't get it already. Uh, we will deal with the diamond on top of the hill. I'll tell you when to go grab it when the time arises. For now, we're heading to the west here, down into the forest. And once you get over here, you'll see a saw left on a stump. Pick it up. And now we're going to head to the east. Um, we're going to be heading to the other side of the village. There was the island that we use, or the land that heads up the hill has the lumberjack's house on it. And he lost his saw, so he can't do any work, so he's very depressed. Um, he can be in a few different spots on the island. Genu generally, I find him down here, as you can see we did today. And he's happy to get his saw back. Um, sometimes he's up by his house. Sometimes he's walking down this direction towards the beach. Um, once you get that to him, head down south, southeast this direction. You'll see the grubs to our west there. Remember that spot for later. But we're going to head down here. This is where the second fire pit is for sleeping. But it's also where the black or the hammer for the carpenter or lumberjack. Sorry, I'm getting them all confused. Is. The blacksmith is different. The lumberjack slash carpenter are the same frog. So return the hammer. To the carpenter, once you give him the saw, he heads back into the trees up here. Give it to him, and he'll be happy. And once he is done expressing his happiness in bubbles, talk to him again. And that will trigger that you want him to get some wood to repair the bridge to the West Island. You're done with the carpenter slash lumberjack for now. And now we're going to head back south again to our, uh, toward where that sandbar is. The cartographer should have moved over here there he is uh go ahead and chat with him uh if he's not here it means he's somewhere over on the the east island he follows this path over to some sunflowers so just walk this direction and you will run into him um he heads over towards these flowers so we need to wait for him here 
And once he gets over here, we're going to show him a sunflower. And I consider this to be the cartographer's third quest. Um, so you don't actually get a quest uh, reward or notification for it. So we've done that. You can throw the sunflower away. And now we're going to head to the southeast of this island. We haven't been over this direction yet. Um, and we're going to head to the south here. And once we get past this big rock on the left, just head completely south and pick up the frog head. There is a tadpole or slug stuck here, and we need to come back and get him later. But for now, he'll be fine. Grab the frog head, and we need to return to uh, near our campfire. So head back to the central island using the sandbar. And we're going to head a little bit to the uh, west. Mostly straight west, but you are going to want to make a little bit of a southwestern turn to get across the bridge. Because we need to return to the farmer's area, which I don't know if we've actually gone through yet. I, there we go. So, the scarecrows lost their heads, so none of the... Uh, Birds are scared, so we're going to bring this frog head to the upper left one. The upper left one has a blue fruit that we need for story progression. Um, so we're going to put it there for now. And now we're going to return to where the mushrooms were heading up the mountain. Uh, we're going to head up the mountain to look for the diamond again. Uh, and if you already got it, you can grab it and bring it down to the lady frog. If you didn't get it, now we can check to see if it's there again. There is a chance that darkness comes too soon and the lady frog goes into her house before you make it back down. That's fine. Uh, grab one of these mushrooms, head back down the hill. You may have seen this spot, but this is the best time to do it. Just drop the mushroom in there and now we're going to head all the way back up the hill and there you see why the slugs annoy me because they have their ai programmed to try to run a set distance away from you but always keep close to you and if you change direction quickly you end up running into them and it's just kind of an annoyance for me so we're going to head all the way up the hill and hopefully that diamond will be here. And I haven't really been keeping up on the jumping so uh, as much as I probably should. The good news is that, I don't think I mentioned this, but they are cumulative across all playthroughs. And I saw the shiny stone, there it is. So we're going to grab that and we're going to throw it over here. And then we're going to grab the diamond and make our way down the mountain to give it to the lady frog. Again, if the diamond and shiny stone isn't there, you can check every day before you go to bed. Um, but you will be able to get this for sure once the West Island is open. Because the West Island has a bunch of these uh, shiny stones. To my knowledge, this is the only one that you can get before the West Island opens, and sometimes it just doesn't show up. So run it over here to the Lady Frog, and she will give you her second frog head, and we're going to go and bring that down to another of the garden spots for the farmer. And again, it's not a big deal if you can't get the frog heads or you can't get the diamond. It just pushes back your schedule a little bit. And we're going to put the frog head in the bottom right farm. And now we're going to head back up the mountain. And now we have an abundance of tadpoles following us. Whoa. Hey. 
I'm just going to not talk a whole lot for now. Just try to save my voice. I haven't done a lot of recording lately, so a two to three hour video could uh, take its toll on me. So once we get up here to this ledge, we're going to go to the northwest here and make this little jump. If you're worried about making this jump, you can go up another level. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. My mistake. We do need to go all the way up. I'm a dummy. I apologize for that. Again, it doesn't really matter. We have nothing with villagers anymore. So, you can just be mad at me for wasting, like, an extra 30 seconds of your time. That's fine. I will take that anger. So, you can do that a different way. Um, you can actually go to the left on that lower ledge. But if you walk over here and look down to the left, you'll see there's an ice cube. Um, that's where we need to get. So, just drop off. Pick up the ice cube, and we're going to drop down to where the gate is, just below that. Because we need to bring the ice cube to where the grass is, which indicates that it's warm enough to melt the ice. So, I'm going to run down here, and you should see the thing that is in the ice cube start to protrude as the ice cube melts. So, just be patient. I don't know exactly where the cutoff for the temperature being warm enough is, so I stay a little bit down the hill to be sure. And once the ice breaks off completely, we're going to head back up to bring it to the Frog Buddha. I think is what the intention is. So Again, you can uh, go up one more level if you're not comfortable trying to make that jump. And you can drop the statue there. With that done, we're going to drop down uh, this direction, but we're actually going to head to the west. The southwest here. We need to get back to where the axolotl is for our final activity of the day. So, drop down here and go to the right, and you'll see the third and final training dummy frog head and we're going to bring that to the garden to finish off the farmer um, with the three frog heads back the farmer will now be able to farm coins for us unfortunately it's going to be a couple more days uh, before we get any coins so this is what you're going to miss if you can't get the diamond from the top of the mountain you'll just have to push back the um, coin farming and the subsequent achievements and tasks that go with that. With that done, we'll go down a little bit to our fire pit here. I believe you need to bring your sleeping bag over. Oh, we'll do that in a second. It's sitting there right by the boat on the beach. He wants the plant and the sleeping bag, so grab your sleeping bag and put it in the spot. And because we put our plant there first before it was an official spot for the plant, it doesn't count. With those two items placed, you can go to sleep and end your second day. Still at 3 of 35 achievements. So this is where the glitchy quest for the merchant... Uh, becomes a problem so you may not have to do all of these but I recommend uh, following along with me specifically and from this point on don't leave the game unless I tell you to 
Uh, leaving the game can cause things to go to be in spots they shouldn't be. So uh, wake up, pause your game, hit exit to menu, don't quit out completely, just hit exit to menu. And then when you get back to the main menu, hit continue. And we're going to immediately start running east. It is now raining, which is good. We can do some weather-specific quests, including one for the cartographer and the axolotl wanted a rainflower, so we'll be bringing her one. But we need to head to the East Island. Once again, you'll see the cartographer's tent. He may be standing here. If he is, chat with him to get him to walk to the spot where the flowers were. Or if you're like me, you're going to pass him on the way to the rainflower. Pick up a rainflower and wait for him to walk over and then show it to him. And again, this isn't considered an actual quest, but I counted as such for the achievement for the cartographer's quest because it's required to get him to move on to the next thing. With that done, we can bring the rainflower we picked up back to the axolotl. You'll notice the merchant and the blacksmith frog are going nuts. Um, we will be handling that soon. Um, let's drop this off. Or we can throw it that way. Sure. That was interesting. This game has its share of problems. Pretty sure the icon was up for me to interact with her, but for some reason the game just had me throw it. Let's try that again. There we go. She'll stand up, give us our flower, or feather, and you can pick it up, and we need to bring it to the fisher frog. So go ahead and head to the west. Um, quitting out of the game... Make sure that the merchant and blacksmith are running around crazily in town. There is a chance they aren't, which is why I have us exit out of the game to start day three. But you do need to be very careful with exiting out of the game at spots when I don't tell you to, because that can ruin uh, where things are set up. The cartographer can move, um, some of the villagers can move. Oh, I forgot. The fisherman is over here on the rainy day. So bring the feather to him. He'll give you a rope, but don't worry about it for now. We need to head back to the northeast and find a beehive. And there's one right over here. Pick it up and throw it. Or you can drop it, I suppose. I guess I, guess I was running fast enough to have impact with my drop. That was weird. And we're going to head up the hill here. Drop the honeycomb, hit X on the reel to bring up the fishing crate, and we're going to put the honeycomb inside. With that done, we need to go all the way to the East Island. So what I recommend doing is going a little bit south here and heading east, and grab one of these flowers. These flowers give you a bit of a speed boost, so hit Y, and you get to go a little bit faster. Just like with the honeycombs. There you can see the fisherman frog is ready to plant our coins. And there's our empty stone plot for our house once the carpenter slash lumberjack is finished building the bridge to the west island. He will be available for us to build our house on that spot. And we need coins to pay him, so... Um, hopefully the... Uh, diamond has dropped for you. Otherwise, you have to push all of that stuff back a few days. So we're returning to that slug that was on the beach over here. Because the merchant has lost his slug and he's very upset about it. 
and the blacksmith is helping. I'm not really sure whose slug it is. I just know that both the blacksmith and the merchant are very upset by this. So pick up the slug and bring it back to the merchant. So we're going to be uh, bringing this to the merchant, but he may not recognize it. So bring this to him, and he still doesn't know what the... It's like, what? What do you mean? You? I need my slug. Why did you bring me my slug? You just drop the slug, and it, once again, go to exit to menu, and then continue. And we're gonna run, we have to, it spawns us back at the boat. And we have to run northeast into town. What you're gonna wanna do is go chat with the merchant when you spawn and run back into town. The merchant and the blacksmith are gonna be standing still. And it almost seems like it takes them a little bit to process that, oh yeah, that's right, he did bring me my slug and I just didn't recognize it. And after a few seconds, after you chat with them, they will reset. So, go and chat with him. And there you go. He's going to run over here. And once he's in place, go ahead and chat with him. And uh, we say we want his wheel. And he wants us to get the lantern from the hermit. In order to do that, we need to bring the Hermit a cold drink. So what we're going to do is head into the tavern and get another achievement here. So jump up to the tap and hit it. There's your achievement. Pick up the glass. And we need to go up the hill to the Hermit. But don't talk to the hermit right away. Head over to this spot right here and hit X to drop your drink. Chat with the hermit about the lantern and he'll tell you that he wants a cold drink. So now you can grab the drink and give it to him and he'll give you the lantern. Now we need to bring the lantern to the merchant. Quickest way to do that is just drop down on top of the axolotl again. Just be careful that you can pick up the lantern and run over and bring it to the merchant. And what we're going to do is we're going to chat with the merchant one more time just to make sure. He tells you that you need to come back. And we're going to bring the wheel down to our campsite. So, go ahead and bring it down. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, make sure you do not put any of these pieces on your boat. Doing so will void an achievement, which is a time-consuming and annoying achievement. So, just drop the wheel back here. And once you do, we're going to head back into town. And we're actually going to head up the hill behind town, so head to the east. I'm actually going northeast. Should learn my directions. And we need to replace the church bell. The church bell, since you exited out, gets respawned up here. And then you just jump over and place the bell. And that makes the priest helper happy. 
which we haven't talked to him yet, but he is wandering around. And we're going to head to the east here, into the tavern. And we're going to jump up here and grab this mug and put it under the tap. And again, uh, pour ourselves a drink. There are mugs hidden behind the chef there if you, for some reason the mug on the table isn't there. And now we need to find the priest's helper, which the priest's helper does not have his hat. There he is. So put your drink down, chat with him. He wants a cold drink, and then give it to him. At this point, uh, you should go check for the shiny stone if you don't have it. Um, we have nothing else to do, so if you... Um, if you don't need it, return to that uh, southeastern beach where we found the carpenter's hammer. We're going to sleep at that fire pit. But for the sake of showing you what you guys and gals should do if things are not working for you the way they have for me... At this point, if you don't have the diamond, we need to go all the way back up the hill to check for it. And as you can see, the froggy friendship achievement unlocked because the game recognized that the gate had been open and that finished the cartographer's quests. Now, if the West Island is open, then there's a chance... Uh, that that achievement will not unlock for you and you will have to do a quest over on that west island I will show you what you need to do if uh, the cartographer's quest did not unlock or the achievement did not unlock for you So don't fret So if the diamond is here again grab it bring it into town and try to find the lady frog She might have gone to sleep. So if she has bring it with you to your uh, fire pit but here's a neat little trick if you jump off the edge into the water and drown you just spawn at your main boat site so if you got the diamond bring it back with you and try to find the lady frog and you can uh, place the frog heads as we had been if you can't find the lady frog, bring it to the southeastern fire pit here. And just put it on the ground next to you and you can bring it to her uh, tomorrow. Go to sleep and that'll get you another achievement. Couch surfing, that'll get us uh, six achievements. Again, you might be at five if the cartographer thing did not prompt you. If you didn't have to go up the mountain, the cartographer quest definitely will not pop for you. So, um, but it's a little glitchy as to whether this stuff works. Day four, the first day that the weather may be different for you. Um, because it's rainy, we're going to head up into town and unfortunately the merchant wants a sunflower. Because it's rainy, we can't do that. Uh, there are quite a few things that if it's sunny, you should be doing. Um, the grub do not come out if it's rainy, so we can't do the story quest for the sale. So we have to wait till tomorrow for that. And because we can't get the sunflower for the merchant, we can't get a coin to plant in their garden. So we have to push all of that back too. So go ahead and chat with the merchant. Um, if you didn't have to go up the mountain to get your shiny stone and have not unlocked the cartographer quest, we need to head over this direction anyways. But the cartographer is sitting over by this mushroom plot. And we need to get a mushroom, so we're just going to go south from here up the hill to where we found the cartographer initially, and there are a couple of mushrooms here. If there aren't any there, there's the plot uh, to the south a little bit more that should have some next to it. And bring one back up here. 
If the cartographer is here, this counts as one of the cartographer's quests, and then you'll have to wait until the bridge is open to finish off his achievement. If not, that just gives you the fifth mushroom. Now we're going to head back into town. This is actually a very short day. Even if it's sunny, um, you don't have a lot to do today. The first couple of days have the most stuff to do uh, overall. So we're going to head back to the tavern. And we're going to run to the little pole thing on the left side that flushes the concoction we've made. Go ahead and chat with the frog. You don't really need to. He's going to tell you you need a green apple and a mushroom. So we're going to take care of both of those right now. First, we're going to head almost straight south from where the tavern is, and we're going to follow the river here. Because on the other side of this lily pad pond, well, in the center is an island with some apples on the tree. So grab one, and we're going to bring it back, and we're just uh, going to put it in the tavern pot, just like we did with the flower. Now we need a mushroom, so just head up the hill behind the uh, the tavern and the, the village here and head to our spot where we've gotten mushrooms before and grab one and bring it down. Just like before, the frog will be happy, but the concoction won't be ready until tomorrow, so that'll be all we can do for now. And with that done... We're now going to head to the Eastern Island again. You may have noticed when we first went over there, we passed kind of a monument in the in a center of four mushroom dirt spots, and we're going to go take care of that. Because planting those four mushrooms will get us our second ritual statue. And there's actually another achievement you can attempt to do here if you want to, but you do need to be perfect if you want to try it. So I don't recommend it if you aren't confident. You can do it at another time. Um, the four mushrooms you need for this are kind of to the northeast of the, the monument, so you're just going to have to keep making trips back, uh, back and forth. So this gives you mushrooms 6, 7, 8, and 9 towards that achievement. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. And then we're going to grab the statue and head up the hill. Now, you can attempt to do the secret time trial here, but you do need to be perfect. Um, and it's actually easier to do at a different time, so I recommend waiting to try it at the different time. Hop up, grab your statue. If you want to try to go for the race, now you can just go to the south and run through the gate, and we're going to head up the hill. We don't really have anything else to do at this point, so you can give it a try, even if you fail it. It's the last thing we're doing for the day, so... Not a big deal. Um, if you are essentially perfect, you can do this with your normal walking speed. Um, but you can also use the beehives or the uh, flower that I showed you earlier to give yourself a little bit of a speed boost, which gives you some wiggle room to miss a jump or two and still be able to make it up in time. So 
So if you're just bringing the statue, once you get up to this next ledge, you can go to the left. But if you are doing the time trial, then uh, follow along with me. And don't worry too much about the ticking. It's just there to get you kind of stressed out. As long as you make all the jumps, you will get up here. And there we go. We got the time trial. Again, you can do that later without the ritual statue with a... Uh, a speed boost item in your hand which makes it a little bit easier uh, once you get that or if you're not trying bring the ritual statue over to the frog and then you can just jump off the edge you will respawn at your boat and you can plant or plant grab some wood and start a fire as you can see the cartographer has made his way to our campsite which is why we put our wheel over on this side, because uh, if your boat parts are on the ground where the cartographer's tent pops in, you may lose your items. I'm, I think they'll just respawn in the spot you initially got them, but uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. So, day four is the gun, or done again. The uh, time trial achievement may not have popped for you if you didn't attempt it or you didn't complete it. And the cartographer's quest may have popped for you when you went up the mountain there, but it might not have. And now we are on to the next day. So, first things first, we're going to head to the west here. Now that it's sunny, we can get our sail. Go ahead and talk to the painter frog. The painter frog will tell you that he needs a grub. And I showed you where the grubs were earlier, but first we need to go up to the farm. Since we have all of the frog heads in place, all of the fruit is growing. So head up and grab one of the blue fruits, and we need to go directly east from here. Okay, directly might be a bit uh, of a misdirection, but mostly. Once you get over here, just drop the blue fruit in the middle and run away. Slugs will come out. One of them will eat it and get fat and can't run away. And now we bring it back to the painter frog. And the painter frog does a questionable thing to the slug, so... Give it to the painter, and, <coughs> excuse me, he'll squeeze the slug out, I think, so he gets blue paint. And will give us a sail. Again, do not put the sail onto your boat. Bring it over to where the wheel is and drop it back behind the plant in the log here. And now we're going to grab a mushroom, and we're going to head to the northeast, back to that lily pad island where we got the green apple and we're going to plant a mushroom in it. That'll get us mushroom number 10. Now we're going to head back over to the east, to the east island, so we can grab a sunflower and bring it to the merchant. And again, weather can affect this. If it's still rainy again, some of these the painter quest, the sunflower quest, will not be able to be done, and you'll have to push them back another day. Um, we're going to be getting a coin here pretty soon. And you won't be able to plant the coin and have the farmer duplicate it if you haven't brought the diamond to the lady frog to get the frog head and have put the frog head in the farmer's garden. The farmer will not be available until all three frog heads are returned. So there's a lot of moving parts here. I've did, done my best to streamline everything, but unfortunately, until things get patched, um, I think you're just going to have to deal with some of the randomness. Give the merchant the sunflower. He'll give you a coin, and we are going to uh, immediately bring it down 
to the farmer. When you do, If I can jump over, okay, awesome. Just plant it like that, and then chat with the farmer. He'll tell you to come back tomorrow. And then head to the west again. And underneath the farmer's house are a ton of mushrooms. Keep that spot in mind. That's where I recommend you get the uh, throw 1,000 items achievement. Um, but we're going to bring the mushroom to this plot to the northwest to get mushroom number 11 of 13. And now we're going to head back to the fisherman. I do apologize if you can hear it. My neighbor is mowing their lawn. Um, you'll see that the rope for the boat is just sitting there. For now, we're going to ignore it. We're going to get our achievement for catching a fish. We're going to pick up the blob for fish, bring it down here, and just place it on the ground. We need to go get another honeycomb. Now, this is basically a backup plan in case something fails, but it's not a bad idea to do, just in case. So, once again, get a honeycomb by throwing a beehive, and we're going to put it in the fishing crate. You actually don't need to fish again for anything else. So run up, put the honeycomb in, put the reel, and now you can grab the blobfish. And we're going to bring the blobfish back to the tavern. Once you get in the tavern, just drop the blobfish on the ground to your left. We're going to run over. We're going to pour ourselves the next drink. We're going to drink it. And now, if you hold A, you kind of do a little frog hop. And if you hold a direction, you get a boost in your first jump. Not all that useful, to be honest. I didn't find it to be anyways. Go ahead and flush the concoction. Talk to the... Chef Frog, and he wants a strawberry and a blobfish. Good thing. We already got the blobfish, so drop it in the vat. And the strawberry is growing in the farmer's garden, so we're going to head down to the farmer's garden in the bottom right plot and grab a strawberry. The farmer has three plots, but in all of my playing, I have never seen a request for the fruit from the bottom left one. So I don't know if that's something they messed up when they coded the game, or if it's just there for decoration, but so far I have not found a single reason for that third type of fruit at the farmer's garden to exist. Bring the strawberry up to the tavern and throw it in the vat back here. And then we're going to follow the river again to that lily pad island. And this time we're going to pick up a red apple for our next concoction. If we can get up, there we go. So grab one of the red apples. And we're going to do the same thing with the red apple that we did with the blobfish. We'll just drop it on the left side of the tavern floor. And that'll be it for the day. Um... I recommend going to check on the bridge. I'm pretty sure the, the carpenter slash lumberjack only works on the bridge if it's sunny. So you may have more progress on the bridge than I do if you've had two sunny days. On the flip side, you know, some of the rain specific quests you won't have completed. But um, the bridge is over this direction and just up here. And it takes three days of work, I believe, for him to finish this. Um, once you check on it, just jump into the water, you'll spawn by your boat, and you can create a fire again to go to sleep. Um, if you really want to, 
you could have gone and grabbed the rope and brought it back right now too while we were over there, but I have that in the checklist for later. So go ahead, build your fire, go to sleep. You're going to find that we're going to sleep much earlier in the day from now on because there's not as much to do. So again, uh, 8 out of 35 achievements. You may or may not have gotten the time trial and the froggy friendship achievements. Um, at this point, you can keep running up the mountain every day and checking for the shiny stone if you don't have it. But uh, in a couple of days, the West Island is going to be open and you can do it automatically then. So, day six. First things first. Head over this direction and see if you have a plant. If you do, pick up one of the coins, you'll get an achievement, and drop it on the second pile, and then put the f other coin that grew and put it back on that pile. Get that taken care of right away. We're going to now head to the, uh, the farmer, or farmer, excuse me, the fisherman, and we're going to take care of those rock piles that you've probably seen around with the glowing lights on top. We're going to get that achievement out of the way today. So, just run into the first one here, run into the second one here, and run into the third one here. We're going to return to the stone lot and go north, and you'll find your fourth stack up on a hill over here. Now we need to head to the East Island. Again, feel free to grab one of these flowers and give yourself a little bit of a speed boost. And we need to go towards where the four mushroom plots were. And again, I know I haven't been, but you should keep jumping as much as you can. And you want to go up the hill over here. And then up this way and follow this wall. And then up this and follow the wall. And that will be your fifth rock pile. And now we need to head up the mountain. Once again, you can check for the shiny rock while we're up here. And also there is a chance that the cartographer's achievement will unlock if you haven't been up the mountain uh, since we tried this. The other thing you can do, um, although we'll be attempting it later, is we're going to come back down and do the time trial again. If you decide to do it, uh, or didn't already do it. But we want to make sure we get those piles of rocks done in one day. So we're not we're not going to do the race immediately. We'll get the rocks done and come back and try it. The very last rock pile can be a bit tricky. So uh, you may want to watch the video for when I get to the last one. Just so... You know, you don't run into any problems with it. So once we get up here... We're going to head to the left, and here is the sixth rock pile. We're going to head all the way up to where the ice flowers were. Or are. And again, you can check for the shiny rock here. 
If it, if it is there, just throw it and leave it there for now. We can come back and get that later. Drop down. There's your seventh pile. And you're going to drop down to the ice cube and drop down to the frog Buddha. And you'll find your eighth pile. And now we need to head back to the gate. Grab one of the leaves here, just so you have extra. And we're going to head to the southeast, and you're going to not do what I did and get stuck on the rock. And you will run into some more leaves over here. What you need to do is kind of jump to the southeast from here while you have the leaf. There you go. And you will find your ninth and final rock pile. So what we're going to do is jump off the edge. You're going to wake up at the beach. Go north and grab this beehive, if you haven't already. I'm not going to be uh, showing you the time trial run again, because... Well, actually, I guess I can. Because our next, our next thing is up there anyways. So, you might as well follow along with me doing this, even if you've already got it. But we are going to be heading back up the mountain regardless, so it's not a bad idea to um, follow along with me anyways. If you don't want to do the race again, just head up to where the race ends and you can rejoin uh, the guide when I meet up with you. But make sure you have a beehive for this. The flower isn't as good. So just like before when I showed you, run through. But now you have a speed boost and you can keep the beehive all the way up the hill. Uh, I do recommend getting rid of it once you get to the gate. But uh, you, I don't know if it's about twice as fast, but you move significantly faster with the beehive, which will give you a lot of extra time to make some of the platforming jumps to finish the time trial. And again, you should have unlocked the cartographer achievement from heading up the mountain. If you haven't, once the West Island is open, I will show you the final quest that he has that should unlock that for you. Once you get up here, I recommend just throwing the beehive away and continuing up the mountain. And we finish the time trial again. But what we're going to do now is we're going to head back down to where the leaves are. And we're going to try a bit of a tricky achievement. And we're going to spend the rest of the day working on this until we get it. This one can be a pain. So, uh... You know, don't be frustrated if you don't get it on your first try. It's very easy to get frustrated at this achievement because if you fail, you have to run all the way back up the mountain. We're gonna go for the achievement for jumping and staying in the air for seven and a half seconds. And to my knowledge, this is the only way to do it. I have tried all sorts of different methods and I was unable to get it to work anywhere else. So what we need to do is get up with our leaf to where the blue flower is, or ice flowers were, and we need to jump on top of this uh, kettle here. Just be careful because you do have that uh, froggy jump power up, So, and you have a leaf, so it's very easy to accidentally float off the edge. Once you have this in, what you're going to do is you're going to jump to the north, hold forward until you see your character enter the clouds, and then you're going to hit X. Right when you see your character enter the clouds, hit X. So you're going to jump, hold forward, and hold up, and then when you see your character get into the clouds, hit the X button. So go ahead and just watch very carefully. Be ready about now. Press the X button, and there you go. 
following with style achievement. If you failed, you do have to go all the way back up the mountain. Uh, the leaf should respawn there, and you can just keep trying. But uh, you have the rest of the night, you can attempt to do that. It's not that big of a deal. Once you have that done, you're good to go. Uh, if you want to, you can again go check on the shiny stone. You can try to bring that down to the lady frog if you haven't already. You can check on the bridge construction to see how close that is. Or you can just go right to sleep. And at this point, we have 11 of the 35 achievements. You should have the cartographer one by now, but there isn't a guarantee of it. And I did show you the time trial suit. So I think you'd be at 10 out of 35. Oh, I apologize. No, I read that wrong. Never mind. We're good. Sorry. Just being dumb. So yeah, you should be at 10 out of 35 if the cartographer one has not unlocked for you. So day 7, it's now rainy. <clears throat> Again, you can get some of the rainy quests done if you were unable to do so to begin with. Run over to the garden. And first things first. Replant two of the coins. Grab one of them and bring it up to the merchant. The merchant will allow you to purchase an item that'll get you an achievement and you'll get the ritual statue. Uh, real quick, run and check on the bridge. If the bridge is not done, then the carpenter won't come uh, for you to build your house, so. The bridge is done, so you'll be able to pay the carpenter, but for now, we're gonna ring, or bring this third and final ritual statue up the mountain to get that achievement. And uh, again, you can check for the diamond uh, up top on the hill, but for sure you can get the lady frog her diamond today. The West Island has a bunch of shiny rocks on it. So I actually recommend going all the way up the mountain to see if the shiny rock is there. Because since you're up here, you can just grab it and uh, have it with you. Just like before, if you're worried about the jump, you can go up one more level. But once you have it, you can just drop the statue in the third spot. That did not recognize it. Get you an achievement and a, a red, pink ritual statue. Doesn't do you any good, you can just leave it right there. Again, if you want to, go check for the diamond. But if you don't need the diamond, just jump off the edge. Everything else we have to do is related to the West Island, so first off, we're going to head east and just see if the carpenter is over here yet. There he is. He's on his way. So grab your other coin that you left here and give it to the carpenter, and he will start building your house. You have to do that two more days for him to finish. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to head over to the West Island. So however you want to get up to that bridge again, feel free to do so. So there are a couple of things we're going to take care of right off the bat. 
Um, the carpenter, I'm sorry, the cartographer may not be here quite yet. If he is, he's going to be up here. Right next to these ruins. And he's going to be asking for you to bring the purple gem from the east island over to here. So that's what you need to do. You need to go to the east island um, up that hill there, grab the purple gem, and bring it over to that spot. You may have to give it to him or put it on the spot on the rock. I can't remember for certain. But once you do, that will be the final cartographer quest, and you will unlock the achievement. And he will move into the spot he's been on my game uh, next to the uh, boat campsite. But if you don't need to do that, or if you are done with that, we're going to head back to this spot to get these mushrooms, and we're going to get the final two mushroom plots in the game. First one is right here. And you can see the second one a bit higher there, so we're going to run back down and grab another mushroom. Uh, real quick, just for the sake of you guys and gals, if you do need the shiny rock, they are up here. So you can get them. Uh, I don't, but it's just like the one up on top of the hill. Throw it, the diamond will pop out, and you can bring it to the lady frog. And this should give you your mushroom achievement. Fantastic fungi. So now we just have a little bit of running to do. Um, in the upper right hand corner of this island is the dodos, I think. And the dodos will lay eggs and we need to bring eggs back to the tavern. The dodos will chase you if you are holding an egg and the eggs are breakable. So you have to be careful when running with them. Um, some of the hanging lanterns I've run into and they smash the egg, so be careful of that. And if you throw an egg, it will smash, so be careful of that. Grab one of them. And you should be okay if you're following the path, except for one spot in the village here where you may run into the hanging lanterns. This bridge specifically was the one that that broke my egg. So bring it back to the tavern, run inside, and put it in the pot immediately. Hello folks, I do apologize for another interruption, but past Bonky Kook was a complete idiot for the next five minutes. Um, he was following his uh, bulleted checklist, but he hadn't fully completed it and was just following notes after like day six and what ends up happening is he forgets that he forgot to flush the uh, potion that we had already drank so we're running back to the tavern with a dodo egg right now and past bonky kook does some really stupid things the next five minutes or so and i'm jumping in here to clarify what we're going to actually be doing so what you need to do is run into the tavern and place the egg you're carrying on the ground somewhere safe. You're going to be picking it up in a few seconds, so it doesn't... Uh, don't worry about it too much. Just make sure it's on the ground, out of the way, and not broken. Run over and flush the concoction that's currently in the keg. We don't need it anymore. That was the jumping one that we already drank. Once you have flushed it, pick up the egg and put it in the vat. And then pick up the apple we have in there and put that in the vat. And that has us uh, finishing the current chef quest. We'll have to come back tomorrow to get the potion and drink it to get the tongue uh, ability. But now, after that, we're going to do a little bit of mission prep for the final chef frog mission so that we have the items over here. So, what we do is you're going to be heading back to the West Island. And you can watch the video if you want. It just... There's a lot of mistakes for the next few minutes, so you're going to have to follow along anyways, and you'll see the location of the red rock, 
which we need to bring back on the West Island. And we're going to need to get a honeycomb and another dodo egg, which I struggle with also. I get attacked by the dogos and have to go back and get another one. So this is rather entertaining. If you're angry at me for wasting your time, you can watch me struggle for the next few minutes. But we need to bring the honeycomb, the red rock, and the egg back to the, sh uh, the tavern and put them on the ground so that when the next shift quest is available, we have all three items already there. Um, so that's what you're going to be doing. That's the focal point of what happens here. Um, there is one more warning. The next day... When you go back to the tavern, you're going to drink the potion. Remember that your character throws his mug after he drinks a potion, so you might want to bring it outside and drink it. Because what happened to me is I drank the potion and it broke my egg, and you'll see that happen here. But um, So get the red apple and the egg into the vat after flushing it, then bring the egg, the honeycomb and the red rock into the chef's tavern and you can uh, continue on from there. Oh, I didn't flush that con concoction. Make sure you are not moving if you need to place the egg down and hit X. And then my egg broke. Because he threw the mug at it. Awesome. So now we have to head back to the island to get another egg. Grab the apple, put it in. I apologize for that. A little misstep on my part. So uh, I will be right back. And I'm back with an egg. So jump up, drop the egg in to go with your apple. And now you're good to go. Pick up the mug. Run outside. Throw it and then hit X. I apologize, I screwed that up. Never mind. I did things out of order there. We have to make that next that next drink is the tongue one. And I was an idiot and didn't flush the tavern first and got my egg broken. So I'll try to jump back and make a note there. What we need to do now is, again, bring another egg, a red rock, and a honeycomb into the tavern. I apologize for the missteps there. So the egg is up at the top of the hill, but the red rock is down to the bottom here. So we're going to get that first. Just drop off the edge here to fall down on the red rock deposit. And we need to bring one of these to the tavern. This is just in prep for the next chef quest. And then we'll need a honeycomb and an egg. Um, the egg can be a little bit scary, so if you want to wait until the day that we have to do the stew, uh, feel free. Just drop the red rock anywhere. I apologize for that misstep again. My my checklist was airtight through the first five days, but every time I've tested it, something went wrong. So for these last couple of days, I just have almost a Cliff Notes bulleted checklist. And uh, I did not mention the drink needing to be flushed. So that's why I screwed that up. And I apologize for that. Again, just drop the honeycomb. Make sure these slugs are out of your way. Because if any of them follow you, they could run into your egg and break it. 
So we need to get one more egg, so go ahead and uh, head back to the western island. Don't worry, the slugs respawn. But do your best to make sure they do not follow you into the tavern, because any bump to the egg you're going to leave on the ground could break it, and you'd have to do this again. So... But this is the last thing we'll be doing for the day. Grab the egg. Drop down here. And that was extremely rude. Luckily, there's more eggs. If you run out of eggs again, you may just have to go back to uh, to a campsite and go to sleep, and that will respawn the eggs for the next day. And you can try it again if if you're having troubles like I did there. Seems rather rude that they just immediately break their own eggs, though. So just like before, walk in place an egg, and now you can go back to whatever campsite you want to go to sleep. We're going to head back to the boat campfire just because. Gosh, the slugs are so annoying. Okay, sorry. Lost my composure. I just, I don't like that at all. It gives me anxiety that they're always following me around, getting in my way. It's just an annoyance. I don't know if it was designed to be cute or an annoyance, but it's an annoyance to me. Okay. Raining again. Hopefully, by this point, you should have all the weather-specific quests done, but... Head to the upper right, and the carpenter is already sitting here waiting to start part two of your house, so grab a coin, give it to him. We don't really need coins for anything else, so, um... I recommend just grabbing this one and dropping it, but... You don't really need anything else. Um, if you want to, you can grab this third coin and throw it over by your house and replant this coin as well, but we're basically done with the coins. You also might want to get it off of there. Okay. Now we're going to head back up to the tavern and do what we should have done what we thought we were doing yesterday when I drank my drink. I was... A little, little confused because my notes weren't good enough. So, run inside. Jump up. Pour yourself the drink. Drink it. And just be careful that, you know, your glass doesn't break your egg again. Flush the concoction. Go talk to the frog. And he'll tell you... Everything's good. Uh, so you have to come back tomorrow. Pick up the mug, throw it, and hit X while it's in the air to grab it to get a quick and easy achievement. And now we're going to 
excuse me, now we're going to head back to our camp and we're going to bring our plant on a sightseeing tour. Hi folks, I'm popping in real quick to apologize, um, and there's going to be a bit of a weird transition here, but unfortunately my mic cut out at this moment in the original recording, so I'm going to be trying to re-record uh, audio over the rest of this guide. I do apologize if my tone is a little bit different and all that. Unfortunately, there's no real way for me to fix that. So we're picking up here. Uh, we've just started going on a tour of the island with our plant. And I'm going to follow along with what I was doing and try to narrate as best I can to the end of the video uh, in the same way I was to start the video um, when I recorded this initially. I'm doing this quite a few hours later. So... Um, I'm going to do my best to narrate where we're going, what we're doing, etc. for the next 25 minutes, maybe less than that. We don't have a whole lot of time left on the playthrough, and then uh, we'll be ending this video, and we'll be jumping into the uh, second playthrough, where we need to beat the game in five days. Just a bit of warning, the game did glitch on me when I first attempted to record that as well, I had multiple problems with this first recording, so we had to retry it again. I do have that full recording up and edited, and I'm gonna try to stitch all of this together soon to get it up and running for you. So sorry about that. Let's go ahead and we'll start the video again. And we are running to the East Island. We need to bring our plant over to where the purple gem was at the top of the mountain. And that'll give us our first sightseeing uh, location achievement. And we're going to do something uh, to save us some time when we get up to the top. Normally you'd have to run all the way back down the mountain and back into town and all that. So what we're going to do is, once we get right up here, the achievement pops, and then we're going to jump off the edge uh, with our plant in hand. When you wake up at your boat, the plant spawns right back next to where the painter had it, so you can just run up and grab it. And uh, we're going to head over to the west island now. I initially start heading towards the village and then I change my mind. We're going to go to the west island first. And there are two locations on the West Island that we need to bring the plant to. Uh, the first one, I believe I covered the the Cartographer's Six Quest already in the last, uh, the, the earlier recording that we did of the first playthrough. But uh, if I didn't, we're going to be bringing the plant to the first ruins where the Cartographer might be. And to finish that quest, you need to bring the purple gem from the East Island over to this spot where I'm bringing the plant right now. It's right up to the left here. Once you get the plant near the ruin, the achievement will pop, and that's where the cartographer is hanging out for his final quest. If you didn't already get the final cartographer quest achievement to pop, um, you'll have to complete that quest too. And then you bring the plant up to the dodos, and we'll jump off again. Once again, we'll respawn at the beach and go grab the plant. And our final two locations are the village, that main island where the merchant has his shack set up, his shop, excuse me, and then the very top of the mountain where the crystal flowers are. And achievements are going to start coming very quickly here now. And I'm just going to start going into uh, a little bit of what we're going to be doing from now on. Uh, we basically are going to be finishing off our house. And getting our house is actually the precursor to basically the end of our run. Um, we're going to 
finish the tavern quest line, which will allow us to fix our boat, which will give us four or five very quick achievements as well. And then really all you have left is um, the cumulative achievements and getting the uh, the five-day achievement, which again, I w will be stitching together the five-day run. I think it took less than 20 minutes or about 20 minutes. So that's a very quick playthrough. Once you get up to the top here, you just need to jump over to where the crystal flowers are and you will get your last two uh, sightseeing achievements. I think the all areas one pops first for some reason. And I just wait to make sure they both show up before I jump off the edge. And once again, when you wake up, you can go grab the plant. And return it to the campfire. And there's nothing else for us to do today, so we're just going to build the fire and head to bed. And we're just doing a quick achievement check here. We have 14 achievements left, as you can see. Um, I'm actually going to uh, pause because I'm going to be doing this at a different speed than I did it here, I think. We need three achievements for the jumping, running, and throwing things. One is for the playthrough for five days. Five are for basically finishing the story. One is for finishing the house. One is for hanging a honeycomb in the house. One is for finishing every quest and finishing our house. One is for talking to every villager. And one is for the chef quest at the tavern. All of those things are going to be happening very quickly from this point on. So, um, I, I think I did that a little quicker than I did it in the video. As you can tell, we're still on the guide there. But... Things are going to happen very quickly. And I have no idea what I'm doing now. Oh, okay. If you want to grind out the throwing, this is the right time to do it. So as you can see, uh, under where the farmer's house is, there's this wall here. And with the tongue grab ability, you can immediately pick up the mushroom that you've tossed. And since there's a bunch of mushrooms, you always have a mushroom to throw. This is the best place to grind out the thrown items achievement. Um, I don't do it here because it takes like 25 to 30 minutes, I think. Maybe a little faster, but um, I actually had it set up with a turbo controller so I didn't have to do much. But uh, it's not very... You need a more uh, intense turbo controller than the basic one because I was able to uh, put a time limit on button presses and holds to do this very quickly. But doing it manually like this, if you don't have access to one of the higher-end turbo adapters, that will probably take you about 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, as you can see, I was doing it manually in the video there. I'm not going to show the achievement popping because no one needs to see 25 to 30 minutes of me doing that. And I recommend doing it now while you have the tongue grab ability because... If you don't, you'll have to run and pick up the uh, mushrooms yourself. Sorry, it's, uh, my thought process isn't the same as it was when I recorded this initially six hours ago or so. So I'm trying to remember exactly what I did. I apologize for the error, but I'm not going to re record the entire two and a half hour playthrough again. No offense to you. <laughs> that would be a waste, so. Day number nine. We don't have a whole lot to do today. When you wake up, you're going to head to the east and give the final coin to the lumberjack. And now you're going to head north to the tavern. Um, we're not going to... 
get the achievement for finishing the tavern quest today, but we are going to finish off the tavern quest, and then we get credit for it uh, tomorrow morning when we wake up. So you're going to run in, and you'll see the chef frog stirring a pot with his tongue, which is very talented. Go ahead and chat with him just to make sure that the quest starts. And he'll say he wants an egg, a red rock, and a honeycomb put in his pot. Be very careful. Again, uh, the eggs are very fragile. Pick up the egg first and get that out of the way. And make sure when you get to the pot that the icon is over the pot so you're putting the egg in it. And once you're done, you're basically home free. You know, the rock and the honeycomb are much more sturdy items so just run over and throw both of them into the pot once you have all three in you can chat with the frog and he's happy and will tell you to come back tomorrow you don't really need to come back you get credit for the quest unlocking when you wake up And I think that's all we do today. Um, initially, I had said you could grind out the throws, but I already showed you how to do that. So we may just be heading down to the uh, beach uh, boathouse. Oh, no, we're going to go check the progress on the... No, what are we doing? I have no idea. We're going to grab the rope, because I never did that. That's right. Uh, the rope that the fisherman dropped for us when he brought him the feather. We never grabbed that and brought that to our f um, our boat campsite with the wheel and the sail. And we can't put those on the ship quite yet because of the tavern quest line achievement. But if we gather them all up, we can get all the rest of the achievements rather quickly. So I forgot that. Uh, I don't know if I just missed that direction, but... We'll bring the rope back now. Again, make sure you put it back behind the log where you have put in, or placed the wheel in the sail. And once you've done that, you just create another fire to go to sleep. Again, we're, we're at the very end of the game. There's not a whole lot for us to do except get the one or two tasks done per day and then advance time so we can do whatever needs to be done next. Um, we're going to go to sleep. When we wake up, we'll unlock two more achievements, the Home Sweet Home and Just Here for the Food achievement. And once we have the uh, Just Here for the Food achievement, we can start adding parts to our boat. We're going to be popping a lot of achievements here. So if you enjoy that achievement popping noise, make sure you turn up your volume because you're going to be hearing it a lot. And most of these achievements are rare. Or a lot of them have been, so. It's the, the even better achievement pop. So once you wake up in the achievements pop, you can start grabbing your boat items and bringing them over. And popping achievements for doing that, too. The rope one took a second to pop there. I actually got worried watching the video. And once you put the wheel on, then you get notified that the rudder is broken and as it falls off and we need to get a new rudder. But before we do that, we're going to go get this uh, beehive up here and throw it and get the honeycomb out of it and bring it to our house. Because at the back wall of our house is a display, a frame, and we get an achievement for displaying a honeycomb in there. As you can see, there's the achievement for that. And now we need to head up to the Lumberjack's house to the northeast. Uh, if you'll remember, we, when we brought the hammer to the Lumberjack, he was walking along this path to the northeast. Um, he cut down some of the trees up that direction in order to uh, build, get the lumber to build the bridge to the northwest island. That also cleared out a path to a cave in the back, and there is some ore in here that we're going to give to the blacksmith in order to make a new rudder for us. So 
Grab the ore, and we're going to head west to the village. The blacksmith is on the west end of everything. We haven't been to him yet, and chatting with him is going to get us the social light achievement for having talked to every villager on the island. You may have accidentally gotten this when we were doing the merchant uh, quest for the lost tadpole or slug. Um, you may have chatted with him, which means I think talking to the farmer would have gotten you the social light achievement. But in my game, uh, I didn't, so. Go ahead and chat with him. There's the social light achievement. And we'll talk to him about the rudder, and he will ask you to bring some ore. So we had put it down over in that corner so it didn't roll away, and we'll bring it back over to him. And with that done... There's not a whole lot left for us to do. I turned around to chat with him just to be certain that we didn't get it already because uh, the achievement for all of the quests in building our house popped there. Even though the quest wasn't actually complete yet which was confusing to me because on my other runs the achievement popped the next morning when i went to pick up the rudder from him so i'm not entirely sure you might get lucky it might pop there you might have to wait until tomorrow morning um i run up to the campsite up on top of the hill that way when i wake up i can just drop down on top of the uh the blacksmith So again, we go to sleep, do a quick achievement check there. We got six more left. The three cumulative, one for replacing the rudder, one for uh, finishing the game, and one for uh, the five-day achievement. Um, so what we're going to do is wake up, drop down, get the rudder, head to our ship. Unfortunately... It is raining, and you cannot finish the game when it is raining, so we end up having to sleep, I think, two days to make it sunny again so we can leave, but minor inconvenience as we're almost done. So let's go chat with the blacksmith and get our rudder and bring it back. And complain about how the slugs keep following us. That gives me such anxiety. You can attach the rudder down in the water there. And that'll get you that achievement. You're supposed to put the plant on the boat, but because we can't leave... There's no reason to put the plant on the boat yet until it's a sunny day. So build the fire, go to sleep. Uh, if it is sunny, you can just plant the boat or plant the plant on the boat and then interact with the wheel in order to finish the game. But because it's raining, we have to go to sleep and hope that it's going to be sunny the next day. If I remember correctly, it is still raining, which means we have to get up and make a fire and go to sleep immediately kind of lame, but nothing we can do about that. Yep, it's still raining. So we run and dra grab some driftwood and build ourselves another fire. A hard day's work. When we wake up the next morning, it is going to be sunny. I've never seen it be the same weather three days in a row, so I, maybe you have, but we're going to wake up and be able to finish the game. So we're going to grab our plant and put it on the front of the boat. I think there's a pillow at the front of the boat or something like that that we're supposed to put it on. 
And after we hug our plant, we'll bring it over to the boat and we'll interact with the wheel to get our last achievement for finishing the game. And you'll see the fisher frog staring away from us because he's so sad and the farmer frog is digging at berries because he doesn't really care about us. But the rest of them are sad to see us go. And there we go. First playthrough is done. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, pause the video here. As you can see, we still have the three cumulative achievements and the five day achievement left. And uh, I will stitch the five day achievement run to the end of this. And then you should be able to get your 1000 G. Um, I do apologize for this. It's going to sound a little bit disjointed, but if you have any questions, as always, reach out to me. Uh, I will pass it back to past Bonky Kook for the five-day achievement and the rest of the achievements now. Hello there, folks. Uh, Bonky Kook back. Uh, there was a bit of an issue when I tried to record the second portion of our walkthrough here, so I'm I'm going to have to do some editing to get this to uh, line up properly. Unfortunately, I noticed about halfway through our second playthrough that the game had glitched on me, so I have, I have to restart to, to try this again. And also, my microphone stopped working uh, about 30 minutes before I ended the last video. Somewhere around the hour and 40 minute mark, so I'm going to have to go back and re-record the audio for that portion of the video. So, uh, as I said, this game is a bit glitchy, and unfortunately that happened to me, so we're going to have to restart. Um, we are starting our second playthrough. We only have the five-day achievement and then the three cumulative achievements left. You may have gotten the throw a thousand items... Uh, because I told you to grind it out. And you may have gotten the jump one by now, too, if you were jumping a lot more than I was. But that's very simple to grind out. And then we'll take care and show you the grinding spot for the Sea Legs achievement. In a, well, in a third playthrough, really. But we're just going to start a new game and I'll show you exactly what to do. So let's go ahead. We'll start new game. Make sure before you hit new game that you've done everything you can in your uh, your first playthrough because once you start a new game it does wipe the first playthrough save so you can never go back um, I highly recommend getting the throw cumulative achievement done while you have the tongue ability on your first playthrough uh, everything else like I said the jumps and running can be done on a new playthrough no no big deal, but the throw one is so much easier with that tongue ability. And if you start a new game and still need the throw ability, you'll have to go through that entire tavern quest line in order to get to the point where you can drink the potion and get the tongue ability again. So make sure that's grinded out and you have that achievement and then you can hit new game and we'll uh, clean everything else up here. So I'm going to skip the cutscenes here, and everything is going to go pretty similarly to how we did the first run, but a, a little bit different and quite a bit faster. Um, when you wake up, grab the boards, bring them to your ship, just like we did before. Grab the bottle and bring it up with you, but we don't need to talk to the painter frog about it yet, so just drop it and chat with him. Once he's done talking, we'll show him the bottle and get our plant. Which apparently grew out of, like, our lover's stomach or something, if I'm reading the cutscenes right. I don't know. Well, that was rude. Okay. There we go. Grab your plant and hug it. I just assumed our lover, you know, ate a watermelon seed or something, and then the plant grew out of her stomach. Uh, once you bring the plant back, we're going to skip straight to the fisherman. You don't have to deal with the cartographer on this playthrough, so... 
make sure you cut across and head over to the fisherman and be sure you see that rope thought bubble on your way up to the fisherman that way you trigger the next portion of the quest And now we're going to head to the guard frog in town. Going to be a little less specific about where we're going since this is your second playthrough. You should have a pretty good idea where everything is to follow along with me. But now I'm kind of worried that my mic might cut out. It was unfortunate. Chat with the guard frog to get the love letter. And we'll bring it to the painter, who will then give us his love letter to the guard. I assume, I assume they're love letters. Once we get the guard frog to move, we'll go and chat with the axolotl just so the game knows we're looking to get her a rain flower so we can get the feather from her. And then we're going to go get the purple gem to open the gate so we can bring the ice flower to the restaurant. We're just focusing on the story quests in this playthrough, so we don't have to do any of the miscellaneous stuff. So, give the guard frog the letter. Once he starts to walk away, we'll run up and chat with the axolotl. I don't think this is really necessary, but... Once you start the conversation, now we're going to head over to the East Island to get the gem. This should only take like 35 minutes-ish. I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't timed myself doing this. Uh, if you're watching this, then you can see how much time is left in the video and be able to predict, but... Or, relatively close, because I will be starting a third playthrough to um, show off grinding the distance. If that is your final achievement. But, it'll give you a pretty good idea of how long this playthrough takes, and there isn't a whole lot for us to do. Grab the gem, and now we need to go all the way up to the gate... So unfortunately, there is a chance that uh, the merchant quest where we need to find the slug that is missing uh, glitches a bit for you on this run. And if that happens, your best bet is to just restart and try again. Uh, drop the gem in the gate door and we'll continue on up to get an ice flower. Um... And that's what happened to me in my first recording of this, which is kind of a blessing because I hadn't noticed that my mic stopped working. And uh, otherwise I would have probably recorded another half an hour and then needed to re-record an hour's worth of footage. So that's a blessing in disguise, I guess. And uh, as I said, 
once the dev gets that patch out and fixes some of these issues, I should be able to make a, a more consistent, streamlined version of an achievement walkthrough. Um, but we'll have to see what all is considered uh, necessary to fix. The randomness of the weather may not be something they're fixing that might be intended. So we're going to drop down and bring this to the tavern. And then we're going to head back up and get the bell out of the church. And that should get the merchant. To uh, move into town tomorrow to look for their missing slug. With that done, we're going to go south here. We're going to head to the farmer's land, and we're going to go to the upper left farm to get one of the blue fruits, because that's what we need to get our sail. So we're going to grab it, and we're going to bring it back to our campsite and have it sleep with us, because once we get to day two, the crows show up. And if the crows show up, there is a chance... Or, if the crows show up, excuse me, I'm really angry at these slugs who waste our time. Um, if the crows show up, the plants don't grow. The idea being that the crows eat all of the fruit. So, that's why we're grabbing the fruit now and putting it behind our campsite. And once you have the fruit, you can go to sleep. And we're on to day two. Uh, first things first is we're going to deal with the painter because we need to get the uh, grub for the sale. And if we don't do it on day two, um, there is a chance it rains on day three and day four, which would cause us to be unable to get this done in five days. So what we need to do is run over here and chat with the painter frog who wants a sale. So there is one thing that could cause you some trouble, and I, as I said, we talked about the randomness of the weather. If for some reason it were to rain on day five, you wouldn't be able to leave, which would void the achievement. So there, I'm not sure if the weather patterns are supposed to be static or not, which is why I keep saying maybe it'll be fixed in an update, or maybe it's intended to be... Uh, glitchy. Either way, there is a possibility that you go through this and it doesn't work and you'll have to restart. That's not that big of a deal. I think this can be done in about 20 to 25 minutes. So while it sucks if it doesn't work for you the first time, um, it's not a massive time investment if you do have to redo it. Grab the sail, and we're going to put it on our ship immediately. Once you do, pause the game. I'm going to wait for that notification to go away. And exit to menu. Now use your guide button and quit out. And reload the game. This is very important. You can't just quit out and... Uh, to the main menu for this to work. You have to quit out all the way. So once you've done that, hit continue. And now we need to go to the village and make sure that the blacksmith and the merchant are running around looking for their slug. Or tadpole or whatever. Whatever they're called. 
As you can see, the crows are attacking the fruit trees, which is why we went and got our blue fruit. Merchant is running around looking for his slug, and we are going to run to the eastern island to go get it. And hopefully it will be there, because last time it was not for me. Like I said, if they ever update this and make it um, more predictable, then I will redo my guides to reflect that. But as of right now, uh, I think the criticism is fair to leave in. There are just some problems with the game. If you want to get the completion, it is still possible. It's just a little more frustrating because of the randomness of some of the features that are currently in. This time, our slug is there. And we are going to return into town. Now, this uh, this part is going to go just like we did it um, in the regular game. Our first playthrough. We're going to bring it to the merchant. The merchant probably won't recognize it. So, at that point, we're going to... Just save and quit to the main menu and then continue the game. This time we're not going to quit out to the guy uh, using the guide. Um, we're just going to quit out in inside the game to the main menu and continue from there. And for some reason, this time, he he knew right away. So if that doesn't work, if he is still confused and doesn't recognize the slug, go to the pause menu, exit to menu, and then hit continue to come back in. Uh, and you may have to do it exactly as we did it in the, f the first playthrough, where you have to run back into town and talk to him. And then after a few seconds, he will walk to his merchant stand. Once he's sitting over here, we're going to chat with him to get the wheel. He wants the lantern from the hermit. So we're going to go get the cold drink from the tavern and bring it up to the hermit. Just like we did before. And just like before, when we get up to the top of the hill, drop your uh, glass where I do on the flat surface. If you drop it on a hill, it can fall over and spill the contents. So that's why you see me drop it where I do. Go chat with him and ask him about the lantern and he will tell you he wants his cold drink. So pick it up and walk over to him to get the lantern. Bring the lantern back to the merchant to get the wheel, and we are going to grab the wheel and bring it back to our boat. And again, we'll put it on the boat right away this time. And immediately when you do that, the rudder will fall off. So we're going to take care of that right away as well. So after we get the wheel on the boat, we're going to head to that cave northeast of the Lumberjack's house. So we can get the ore and bring it over to the blacksmith. And we're going to grab this beehive to speed ourselves up. Um, you can do that as often as you want. I don't know if they respawn every day, though, but there's also those flowers you can use uh, to give you a speed boost if you want to do that, too. Nothing in here really requires you to be quick, but, I mean, getting anything done a little bit faster is always satisfying. So we get in here, we'll grab the rock. 
The cave becomes more visible once you give the lumberjack a saw because he chops down the trees. But since we haven't done that yet, it's a li little bit more uh, difficult to see that cave. If you don't know where it is, you might not see it. Going to drop the ore over here. That way it won't roll into the water and disappear and talk to the blacksmith. And now we'll grab the ore and give it to him. With that done, that's everything for day two. And we'll have to come back later. Um, the only other things really we're waiting for now are rain so that we can get the rain flower because the rain flower will allow us to get the rope. So we're going to go to this southeastern uh, pier over here where the blacksmith's hammer was, if you were with me for the first part of this walkthrough. And we're going to sleep here, only because it makes us, we're a little bit closer to the eastern island. That's all. It doesn't really matter. And now there's almost nothing for us to do the next few days. It's very quick. Um, we're going to get the rain flower, bring it to the axolotl. We're going to bring the feather from the axolotl to the fisherman frog, who will give us the rope that we bring to our boat. Then we will return to the blacksmith and get our new rudder. And what you do on the following days is going to depend on the weather. Um... Because the weather is random, I think there's a chance that it could rain on day four and day five, which would screw you out of the achievement. But I, I can't guarantee that. Um, when I was first writing my walkthroughs, every single time I played this game, day three and day four were rainy. And then right when I started testing the walkthroughs, suddenly I had a playthrough where day four was sunny. So I, I don't want to say, for a while I thought the first few days were static. And uh, that blew that theory out of the water. So I don't want to make any, you know, blanket statements saying I'm 100% sure the weather is static or, or random. But it sure seems like it's a random pattern, which means there is a chance that it could rain three days in a row, starting with day three. I don't know for certain. So we bring our flower to the axolotl. She'll get up and give us a feather, which we are going to bring to the fisherman. And hopefully escape from the slug. The slugs just give me anxiety. Tadpole. I, I really don't know what they are. If they're supposed to be tadpoles or if they're supposed to be just like slug dogs or what. But Give it to the fisher frog. He'll drop the rope. We'll grab it and bring it back to our boat. And then we'll go get the rudder from the blacksmith. And our boat will basically be all set. We just have to wait for a sunny day for us to leave and get our final non-cumulative achievement.
once he gives you the rudder, you just run back and put it on your boat. Then you can go to sleep and pray for sunshine. I will say that in all the time I've done this, I don't think I've ever seen three days in a row of the same weather. So the likelihood of it raining day three, day four, and day five is not very high. But again, it doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means I haven't seen it. So um, we're going to, with that done, we have nothing else to do except for placing our plant on the boat. But we can't leave until it's sunny, so we'll run around, go to sleep. And it's sunny on day four, which means we can wake up, grab our plant, put it on the boat, and we can interact with the boat to leave. That'll give us the crunch time achievement for completing the game within five days. And again, if it is raining when you wake up, you should be able to just make another fire and go straight to sleep and leave the next day, which would still be within five days. With that done, we'll skip right back to the main menu and jump into the final achievement that you should have, which, if you followed along with me, you may still need the jump one. You should have gotten the throw one, and we're going to show you how to get the walk 10 kilometers one. You can continue your game if you want to, or you can start a new game. It doesn't really matter. If you continue, you don't have as many scenes to watch. So when you spawn in, grab a beehive. And we're going to run all the way to where the gem is on the east island. So what you're going to want to do is, I think all you need to do is have your controller plugged in. But sometimes just having your controller plugged in isn't enough. The game still might time out. So what I recommend doing is setting this up for like 10 or 15 minutes. I think at 10 minutes, like the screen goes dark if you're not doing anything. And then the controller clo shuts off at 15. One way or another, um, you want to keep an eye on this. So if, it, if it's still running after 15 minutes, you're golden to run away. So what you're going to want to do is get up here drop a beehive, pick up the gem, and just put it off to the side. I don't think it spawns another one until you bring uh, the gem like to the gate or something like that. So just putting it in that back corner will allow you to run in here unhindered and that's what you're going to be doing. Um, I think you can just plug in the controller uh, I actually use a Titan adapter for a turbo controller, so I'm pretty sure I had my controller pressing the left bumper all night, or some equivalent button, but I don't know that you really need that. Uh, just set it up for 15 minutes, walk away, go take a shower, come back, and if it's still running, you're good to leave it overnight. Uh, and um, you're probably looking at about 7 to 8 hours of having to leave this, in order to get the 1,000 kilometers because it was misprogrammed. Obviously, once it gets fixed, you may be able to get the 10 kilometers just by playing through the two playthroughs. But uh, if not, you can still grind out however much distance you have left using this method. And obviously, I'm not going to sit here for eight hours so that I record the achievement popping. But once that does, you would have your 1,000G in time on frog island so as always folks if you have any questions and comments for me reach out to me i will do my best to answer them but if not i will see you guys in the next guide i make take care